Hey, good morning, everybody. It is December 12, I believe, Thursday. Is it the 12th? It is the 12th. December 12th, Thursday. Current time is 1026, and it is 3 degrees right now here in Grand Forks. sitting here waiting to dump. It's going to be a while. There's a lot of trucks here. And while I was sitting here, I got to thinking about the uh, <clears throat> the company I haul for in Drayton. And I'm not going to use your name because I don't have permission to use it. But uh, I was noticing that all the people, the workers there, had these new glasses on. Uh, safety glasses. And it got me, and I figured that they must have had a safety meeting or something came up about these glasses, you know. It, it seemed to me something happened, because they were all wearing them. So, I got to thinking about it, and it reminded me of when I hauled mail. I used to haul mail for back in Pennsylvania. I actually had a route that went from Lehigh Valley, Allentown, to near Columbus three times a week and uh, mail is that's a whole nother story to get into but pretty much just a relay you just relay it you know, that's how mail can get across the country so fast it relays relays and so I had that specific uh, part of that process there anyway well we would have safety meetings every so often and they used to come to the hotel and we would stay why the uh, other relay was taking the trailer on his part we would stay about 12 hours in a hotel in Ohio and uh, so anyway during one of the safety meetings the uh, safety guy was up there and he was discussing accidents they have over the last year they would uh, group all the accidents together and they would have a panel. And I think it made it was made up of two uh, office people, the safety guy, and then they would get two drivers from the company. So they sort of had a jury there of different perspectives, if you will. And they would evaluate whether it was preventable or non-preventable, the accident. So anyway, the one safety meeting he the instruct the uh, safety guy got up there and he was discussing all the incidents that happened in the last year and he kept saying incident incident like over and over again and I picked up on that and I thought wait a minute he's not saying accidents he's saying incident and if you think about it words have meanings well an accident an, ac an accident is uh, you get out of your truck you slip and you fall okay that's an accident guy over here is looking at me talking, wondering who the heck I'm talking to at the camera. So, he's wondering, excuse me, I was thinking of this guy. So if you change an accident to an incident, that means now you can have blame for an incident. And so he gave a couple examples. The one that, when he gave this example, I couldn't take it anymore. I had to stand up and say so. There was a driver who blew a tire on his trailer and he pulled over on the side of the road and he felt that it wasn't safe where he was. So, you know, he was pretty close to the edge of the road and he thought, you know, I know about a mile up the road there's a pool off up there. And so we ran the same route all the time. So you pretty much got to know every bump in the road. So he thought, I'm going to move the truck up about a mile, get into that big pull-off up there, and it'll be a lot safer to deal with. Well, he did that, and in the course of that, the trailer, some, uh, the uh, tire somehow caught fire, burned the whole truck up, 
and they were using this poor guy as this example. And basically their example was, well, he shouldn't have moved the trailer. And I was like, okay, hold on a minute. I couldn't take it anymore. So I stood up and I said, let me, I understand you guys have a job to do and you need to come and tell us about this stuff, reliability, I get it. But you're using this guy as an example. I said, now he is in a no-win situation, right? He's sitting there and he looks, he says, okay, as a driver, I'm thinking that this isn't safe to sit here. So he makes a professional decision. He didn't keep driving it, hoping that the thing would make it. He was making a decision to get to a safer place and it didn't work, something went wrong. Now, if he would have stayed there and a car or something would have come and wailed into him and hit him and killed the people in the car, another truck hit him and created a huge accident, then you guys would be here saying that he should have moved to a safe place. So no matter what he did, he was wrong. And I brought that up to the safety guy and he kind of just, well, you know, I said, hold on, you guys hire us to do a job. Now, if I'm driving down the road on the phone eating a sandwich watching a movie and I, and I run four cars over, of course I'm liable. But you hire me to do a job as a professional, to go out there and make decisions, and to do things to drive this piece of machinery safely, to get the stuff done on time, and in the course of that, there's going to be times where you have to make a decision. And whether you want to create a book this thick that has every possible conceivable situation in it, and what we should do about it, you're going to have to leave it to us at times and trust our judgment that we're doing something or if we make a decision that it was the, in our mind we're thinking okay this is probably a better situation than this yes and sometimes we make mistakes it's an imperfect world we're imperfect people we're not even robots sitting in this seat would make a mistake so sometimes this safety stuff goes too far in the sense that all the liability now is placed on us, the drivers. An incident means that it what it could have been prevented somehow. A deer runs across the road. Well, somehow I should have known that deer was there. Maybe I should have prayed and had God tell me there was an animal. There. I mean, I don't know. But sometimes things just go wrong. You have a big truck, 70-some foot unit. You take it on the road. There's other trucks, other people, other humans, cars, things happen. Now you do the best you can do, minimize it. I've been driving two million miles. Thank God I've never had an accident that was my fault. I had one or two uh, that other people hit me. I had nothing to do with They were non-preventable. Thank God I've never had one yet. And I hope I never do. But it doesn't mean that it can't happen. I could go out right here and leave this yard here after I dump and get the major wreck. So, I don't even know what the whole point of this is other than to say, safety people, you got a job to do, we have a job to do. Let's not be enemies. Try to understand what we do out here. And understand that sometimes things just go wrong. So anyway, this is the mill in Grand Forks, and you can see the amount of trucks that are here that are trying to dump. They have three dumping pits here, and uh, one is closed because they're dumping rail cars. So we all have to dump on this side and I think there's well I've been sitting here about 20 minutes this guy is in front of me right here so I go after him that's all I know sometimes you get confused sitting here you forget who's who and what line is what and whose turn is who so there we wait
they could have put this big snow pile someplace else. <clears throat> so yeah, this is what it's like at the mill. And this actually isn't even that bad. There's times you sit here a couple hours and wait. So I'll take an hour to dump any day down at the mill. That's sort of like a win. So I'll turn it back on when we get moving. No consumption of alcohol on North Dakota mill property. Well, you know, the reason they probably had to put that there is because when you're stuck waiting here for three hours to do something that takes three minutes to dump, that's probably why they had to put that there. I'm sure there's a many a driver that felt like pulling a flask out and uh, relieving his uh, impatience. Anyway, so I've been here exactly an hour, 1017, it's 1117. Temperature's going up though, 11 degrees. So what happens is you go underneath there and the dumps way up there so there's probably one, two, three, maybe four trucks in front of me. Probably the fourth guy's dumping. Yeah, so I would be number five here. So it'll be at least another, I'd say half an hour. So I get out of here. Maybe four trucks. I don't know. I'm here four or five. This side over here, for some reason, takes a long. There's on this side. There's three pits to dump in. One, two, three. There's just one big pit over here. But this, for some reason, takes a whole lot longer than this side. So I don't know. Well, the pigeons are up there having a good time today, flying around. One time I actually, a pigeon got trapped in my trailer. He must have been in there eating wheat and I shut the tarp. And I um, transported him to a different spot. I assume he made a new life up there with new friends. Hopefully he adapted and he wasn't a victim of prejudice. Oh, you're one of them Grand Forks pigeons. Yeah. We heard about you. Yeah, you're one of those. Well, here you got spots under your wings down there. We don't believe in that up here. Dumping pit two. Gotta estimate it out here and 